growing up, I I remember watching uh, TV and I saw this sport from Japan. Okay, it's called sumo wrestling. Have you, have you seen sumo wrestling? So it's usually uh, overgrown people fighting each other, right? Um, and mind you, if you think they are just fat, that is not true. They're actually very strong, right? So I've seen, and the goal of it is to push the person outside of the circle. Okay? But obviously, when I look at this, um, who do you think is going to win? Obviously, uh, it's going to be very hard to, to win a battle like that. And uh, obviously, the kids couldn't uh, move any, couldn't move forward, uh, even if they try to push as much as they want. Okay, but I give them, I compliment them for at least trying. Okay, so no sweat, no sweat. You know what? When I think about it, uh, it's one thing to be complimented by man. Okay, it's great when people compliment you when you do a good job. Uh, I feel encouraged when my, my wife compliments me. It's great when you get complimented by fellow human beings, uh, your workmates, especially your boss. I think um, if you're the president of the company compliments you, I would think that uh, you will feel good and you will be encouraged. But I've seen, just like in the Bible, it's one thing to be complimented by man, but it's another thing when God himself compliments you. When God Himself says something good about you, right? And uh, when I look at the life of David, this is the compliment that God gave him that became, in a way, his legacy, which we talked about last Sunday. Okay? In Acts chapter 13, verse 22, it says, After removing Saul, he made David their king. God testified concerning him. I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, and he will do everything I want him to do. Was that a great compliment from God to David? How would, uh, how would you feel if God, you know, you can hear God audibly, and he says these words to you, okay? So, fill in the blanks, okay? When I say blank, you put your name, okay? I have found... Don't repeat the name of the person beside you. Your name, okay? Again, I have found a person after my own heart. He, she will do everything I want him, her to do. Is that great to get a compliment like that from God? I would think so. And when I look at this, okay, I think there's still some echo. Yeah, okay. Um, when I think about this, it means... When he says he was after my own heart, you can see that David wasn't standing, just standing, or sitting idly. When you say after God's heart, that means he was pursuing. He was pursuing what God, God was and what his will is. And he was doing everything that God wanted him to do. He was after God. And it entails moving forward constantly. Not just after one season in life, you stop moving forward. It's moving forward on a consistent basis. It also means that in spite of David's imperfection, he still receives this commendation that he gave his life's legacy. So God is encouraging us that if we want to really obey God, if we really want to receive you know, a, a word from God saying that he's very pleased with you, it's it's something that we need to pursue and we need to keep on moving forward no matter what comes our way. The thing is, some of us, we don't really like to move forward. We are already comfortable with where we are at. I'm happy with my friends. I'm happy with my job. I'm happy. I'm fine as is. But I'm talking here about moving forward spiritually. And some of us, it's possible. You just say, I'm happy with my spiritual walk. Yeah, I go to Sunday services. I attend D group once in a while. I read the Bible once in a while. And you're, you're, you're already comfortable with that situation. So you're not moving forward in a way you are just cruising through your spiritual life. For some of us, we like the idea of moving forward. Okay? And it's all, but the problem with that is it's only with our own pace. I still feel, you hear some echo? Okay. 
Okay, it's still in our own pace. Meaning, okay, I'm going to move forward, but it won't be as fast as I would want to. I mean, as fast as God would want to. I will just move forward according to the pace that I want. And for a few of us, perhaps, you're saying, okay, some of you, you don't think you can even move forward anymore. When you look at your situations in life, you think, can I really still move forward in my spiritual life? Well, if you want to make a difference in your, you make a difference in this lifetime, we need to keep on moving forward. That's why, that's the title, okay? So can you tell your seatmate, keep moving forward? Keep moving forward. Okay. Keep moving forward, right? So, especially in a spiritual sense. So what I'm going to do is, Okay, some echo. Okay. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to share you only a glimpse of three stories in the life of David, wherein he kept moving forward. Is that right? As a matter of fact, each of these stories can be a message on its own. So I'm going to give you a glimpse because our main topic is we need to keep moving forward in our spiritual walk. Okay? So why don't we pray and ask God to guide us. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we come before you and we pray, Lord Father God, right now that you just guide us and allow us to hear the message that you want us to hear, O God. Let it be very clear that there be no hindrance. And Lord, we pray that you are honored. Father God, I acknowledge my imperfections. I acknowledge my lack. So I'm just depending on you right now, Lord, to speak to me and speak through me so that your message will be heard and it will be applied in our lives. Lord, it is not an accident that we are here. And we pray that today you will inspire us, encourage us, and equip us to move forward in our spiritual walk. For we pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Okay, so first, we want to keep moving forward, alright? First is when? When you are victorious. Okay? When victorious, you keep moving forward. Now, I'll explain this. Now, David, um, if, you, if I ask you about David, what do you recall about his life? Okay. There's, there are good parts, right, in his life. There are also bad parts. But the first story I ever heard about David was David and Goliath. Okay. And so this is a story about David and Goliath. And they were looking for someone who's going to fight Goliath. And David said, I'm going to do it. So he approaches the king and he tells the king that he wants to be the one to, uh, to fight Goliath. And in 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 36 to 37, it says, okay, Your servant, can we read this together? Ready, go. Your servant, a skill, go. The circumcised Philistine will be like one of them, because he has defied the armies of the living God. The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. He was just recalling here, Hey, I've been victorious in the past. I was able to kill the lion. I was able to kill the bear. Okay, Were those great achievements? Okay, Anyone here has ever killed a lion? Okay, Anyone here has ever killed a bear? Not yet. Maybe your teddy bear. Okay, not a real bear. Okay? And then later on, so he was victorious in protecting his sheep. Later on, he was given a bigger task, which is to fight against Goliath. And what happened? Was he victorious against Goliath? Yes, he was victorious once again. And because of that, the, his king, Queen Saul, gave him more opportunities and allowed him to lead the troops into battle. And when he would now lead troops into battle, this time, you know, against armies, he would still be victorious. This guy had a string of victories. Look at verse, chapter 18, verse 13 to 14. It says, So he sent David away from him and gave him, his, gave him command over a thousand men. And David led the troops in their campaigns in everything he did. He had great success because the Lord was with him. Okay? A while ago, so he was saying here, the Lord is, you know, the Lord was with him. That's why he was winning all these battles, you know, against all these armies. But he also acknowledged when he was still just fighting a lion and a bear, that it was God who was guiding him. And this time,
time when he was fight, facing Goliath, what did he say? The Lord who rescued me from the paw of the lion and the paw of the bear will be the same God who will rescue me from this Philistine. So there was a string of victories and he was acknowledging it was all because of God. It was still because of God when he was winning all these victories. Now, what's my point here? When victorious, you need to keep moving forward. Why? It is so easy to forget God when you are successful. It is so easy to forget God when things are going well. Okay? Sometimes we start praying even more when you're sick. Or the doctor said, oh, you need to go back a second time for further tests because we saw something. Then you start to become more prayerful. But when everything seems to be okay, finances are okay, we tend to forget God. That's the problem with us as human beings. When, when we seem to have a string of victories or successes or, or life is comfortable, we forget God. Okay? I want to remind each and every one of us here, beware of complacency. Can you tell your seatmate? Go. So beware of complacency. Don't start depending on yourself, okay? And don't depend on as much. You start depending on yourself and you don't depend on God. And later on, it brings you away from God. I wonder, if I was God, I would say, maybe I should give these people a lot of problems so that they will pray for me, and they will pray to me even more. Do we want that? I don't think anyone here prays regularly, Lord. I want to grow in my spiritual life. Please give me more problems. <laughs> no, of course not, right? So, that's the problem with us. We, we tend to be, uh, to drift away from God when we are victorious. So we have to be aware that we are already being complacent. Now, I hear many stories also when it comes to job hunting. Okay, they ask me, Pastor Ryan, please pray for me. I'm looking for a job. I'm looking for a better job. I'm looking for a better pay. You know, I'm looking for a job with a better boss. Okay? And then God, so I pray for them. And God answers their prayers. Okay? So now they get, a, they get a better job or, you know, better pay, better boss. And then, later on, little by little, I don't see them anymore in Sunday services. I don't see them anymore attending the group. Okay, when I see them in the mall, okay, they say they're busy. And then later on, there are more and more reasons or excuses yeah, what's happened, uh, for them to go to attend the uh, places where the Bible is taught. Okay? I'm just saying, maybe, yeah, in terms of job hunting, you're moving forward in your career. But what happens in your spiritual life? And then when problems come, and then the boss becomes mad at you, then you start praying again. You know, it's a, it's a terrible cycle. What happens there is you're just making God like a genie. Do you understand what's a genie? Okay, when you, need the, when you need something, you rub the magic lamp, and then the genie comes out, and then you start asking, uh, you know, commanding the genie to give you his, your request. That's not God. God wants us to have a personal relationship with Him. So I challenge us, all of us, I challenge you, when you're victorious, keep moving forward. Don't think that, oh, I've been victorious now, I, don't, I, I, I can relax now. Well, you know what? As long as you're still breathing, your purpose in life isn't over yet. So we still want to claim more victory for God and point things to God. There's still more people to reach out to. There's still more ministry to do to serve God. Sometimes we celebrate too early and, they, and we become complacent. And God is saying, the finish line isn't there yet. Right? There's still more to do. So keep moving forward. Don't just think, oh, I now have my permanent residency. Oh, I now have my citizenship. I can now relax. And then we drift away from God. That cannot be. There's still more that God wants you to do. And that is why you keep moving forward. Now I want to show you this uh, video clip of a championship basketball game. Uh, yeah, championship basketball game. And the, the white team versus the black team. If this is in Croatia, 
and this is celebrating too early. And you can see how the coach reacts to this. Okay, so let's show this video. Use 
others' failures against you as an excuse to not move, to not move forward in your spiritual life. Okay? People will disappoint you whether intentionally or unintentionally. They will miss your expectations and there will be times that you think you are accepted by these people and there will be times they will actually reject you. But look at, at uh, David's response. He didn't take revenge even when he had a chance to kill King Saul. 1 Samuel chapter 24, verse 6 says, He said to his men, The Lord forbid, so this is David speaking, The Lord forbid that I should do such a thing to my master, the Lord's anointed, or lay my hand on him, for he is the anointed of the Lord. So he had a chance to kill King Saul. And everyone was saying, just kill him, just kill him now so that all these problems go away. And yet, he did not take revenge. When others fail you, keep moving forward. I ask you, how do you usually respond when people fail you? Okay? So I just want, you know, there are many ways. But I just want you to be aware and be, beware of okay, this one. Beware of revenge. Okay? And sometimes revenge can be in a different kind of form. Sometimes it can be through gossip. And that's your revenge. Do you know what this person did to me? And then you say all these things, and then you add a few more, so that you get other people to be on your side. And that is your form of revenge. Another form of revenge is what I call the silent treatment. Have you heard of the silent treatment? Have you ever tried the silent treatment? Well, it... it Someone tried the silent treatment against me, and it works. <laughs> okay? But you have to be aware that whether you are doing revenge also, already. For others, sometimes the way of revenge is you hurt them back. I don't know, physically or, you know, usually through reputation. When others fail you, keep moving forward. You know, there's this group of people Okay, and one of them is this um, actress, her name is Mary Lou Henner. They have this, it's called HSAM, the Highly Superior Autobiograph Autobiographical Memory. Okay, what is this? Basically what that means is, this woman, like Mary Lou Henner and a few others, they have super memories. They can remember dates almost all throughout their lifetime. So for example, Today is uh, 2015, and someone asks you, so when, uh, when was, what happened in February 3, 1981? And then people with HSAM will say, oh, well, that was a Friday, and the weather was kind of rainy. I ate lunch, I ate steak for lunch, and I ate um, potatoes and kumara for dinner. And that was great because we went out. I went out for a walk. Okay? These are people with HSAM. They memorize everything. Okay? The, um, so for this girl, Marilyn, when she was interviewed, and uh, they went to her home, and what happened was she has a big closet. And she will say, and she has a lot of shoes. Okay? Shoes. Ladies, shoes. And this is what they'll say. They'll say, she'll get a pair of shoes. These shoes... I wore this in December 2, 1983. Okay. These shoes, I wore this on uh, March 3, 1994. By the way, that was a Tuesday. It was raining. Okay. It's like freaking. Now, for some of you who are students, this is like the best gift you can ever have. You can remember, you know, you just read it. You read one book. And you can say to the teacher also, oh, what's, you know, if they give you a trivia for your, your textbooks, they say, so what's the definition of, uh, for example, biology? Okay. And then you tell your teacher, oh, the definition of biology? Well, that's in our, it's in page five of our book. It's on the left side, second paragraph. <laughs> I mean, that's like, wow, if you were, uh, if you were a student, you would think this is great. 
I'm gonna be valedictorian. I'm gonna get honors in school because I can memorize everything. Okay? You can even tell your teacher, you know, I remember you wore that clothes two years ago. <laughs> okay, so so that's how people with HSAM um, uh, HSAM uh, have. They remember everything. Now they were interviewed. I mean, how does it work? Okay, so for example, it's similar to this. For all of us, you remember what happened yesterday. Do you? Do you remember what you ate? Now the older people, they forgot already. <laughs> yesterday was a Saturday. Okay? So, you remember stuff from yesterday, right? Yeah. Where you went, what you did, you attended leadership training. Okay? For those with HSAM, the, the same way you remember yesterday is the same way they remember everything in their past. Like, wow! I don't know. Some of you are now knowing what's your next prayer request. Okay? But here's the thing. And one of those with HSAM um, was interviewed also. And she says, well, it might be a gift, but it's also a burden. For example, why? With HSAM, not only do you remember everything about your past, you also recall all the pain. So like one person was being interviewed and she said, uh, they asked her, so what happened, for example, I forgot the date, what happened in May 12, 1985? And then she says, oh my, I remember that day. And I remembered it as if it was just yesterday. That was the time my mom and dad told me that we have to move schools and I have to cut my relationship broke my other friends because we're moving to a different school and I was so depressed that day. So even those with HSAM remembers all of the all of the hurts. And it's no longer nice, right? You remember you know you remember all the hurts. For some of you you remember all the people, all the girls who said no to you. <laughs> okay? And you remember the dates, yeah, Sally said no to me on January 3, and then, you know, Eve said no to me, and you know, you remember all the hundreds of dates for the, the, the thing. Okay? Here's the thing. Here's the thing when it, when it comes to that. If you want to move forward, you actually need to have a short-term memory, especially when people fail you. If you have a long-term memory, okay, if you have a long-term memory, okay, if you have a long-term memory when it comes to people's, people's pain against you, you're not going to be able to move forward. Do you, do you understand my point? So you have to have a short-term memory. So beware of revenge. Instead, you know, this is what I suggest. Okay? You love people even more. Love people even more when people hurt you. You pray and you let go of the hurt. You forgive and let God help you forgive and heal the relationship. And the biggest test whether you've forgiven someone is when you can sincerely show kindness to that person again. You don't have to be best friends again, but the fact that you're able to show kindness to that person who hurt you a lot is a good sign that you are moving forward. I ask you, has anyone failed you recently? What do you need to let go and let go? I pray that when others fail you, keep moving forward. Can you say that to your seatmate statement? When? Third, third story in the life of David. When you sin, Keep moving forward. When you sin, keep moving forward. Second Samuel chapter 11, verse 3. And David sent someone to find out about her. The man said, She is Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, and the wife of Uriah, the Hittite. Okay? So, do you know the story of David and Bathsheba? Okay, so first there was idleness. Instead of going to war, where was David? On top of the rooftops. And instead of sleeping, what did he do? He was watching a live show. Okay, someone was taking a bath. And what, what happened next? 
he asked people and inquired about that person who was that person and they said to they said to him okay this Bathsheba and what did David do he, he they told him give me get me Bathsheba okay? when you sin keep moving forward so there was idleness lust adultery lying deception and murder in that story of David and Bathsheba can you believe it all began with just idleness and it ended into murder I'm sure that was nothing that uh, King David ever planned so what happened he finally when uh, okay, finally when Nathan um, approached him and uh, he rebuked David for what he did in 2nd Samuel chapter 12 verse 13 it says then David said to Nathan I have sinned against the Lord so he finally confessed right when did if you look at this story when did david confess okay when the child was born already and when when nathan uh, approached him and rebuked him so at least there was at least nine months from the time that david committed the sin to finally admitting his sin and confessing it nine months so all these nine months he was trying to still cover up his sin okay but praise god when he had the because he had a nathan a prophet nathan in his life he confessed it and look at verse uh, 13 and 14. nathan replied the lord has taken away your sin you are not going to die but because by doing this you have shown utter contempt for the Lord, the son born to you will die. So did God forgive David? Did, did David receive the full consequence? Right? Maybe not full. Because it says here, David replied, the Lord has taken away your sin. You are not going to die. So it's possible the full consequence of David's sin was God was going to kill David. Okay? He says, you are not going to die, but because by doing this, you have shown utter contempt for the Lord, the son born to you will die. So, was the sin forgiven? Was the sin forgiven? Yes. But were there consequences? Yes. You know what? In the same way, for us, you can have any kind of sin, you can approach God and ask for forgiveness. And God promises He will forgive you. First John chapter 1, verse 9 says, If we confess our sins to the Lord, He is faithful and just and will forgive us and will cleanse us of all unrighteousness. So God will forgive you. But it's possible that even after God has forgiven you, you will still experience some consequences. Correct? Because for in the in the you know, in the wisdom of God, he believes he should forgive you, he will forgive you, but in the wisdom of God, he knows you need to experience consequences so that you can do better in avoiding the same sin the next time. Okay? The problem with us is sometimes we still wait for consequences before we actually repent. Let's not wait for major consequences to happen in our life then that's the only time we repent to God. Okay? So, I want to encourage you to keep moving forward and beware of lingering guilt. Definitely, especially if you are a Christ follower, when you sin, you will have guilt. But if there is lingering guilt after you have repented, it's most probably not from God. It is from Satan still accusing you of that sin that you have already confessed to God. Because when you ask for forgiveness from God, will God ever say, no, I don't want to forgive you? Will God ever say that? I don't think so. That is not the nature of God. So, beware of lingering guilt. The idea here is you repent sincerely. And the word repent means there's a change of mind. Okay? Then you have a Nathan. Okay. Do you have a Nathan in your life who is who you are transparent enough so you can admit your sins and that person 
loves you enough to rebuke you in love. You need to have a Nathan in your life who is able to rebuke you and look at your blind spots and be able to tell you how it is so that you can go back to the Lord. And if you are that Nathan, be sure you do it always in love. Never in anger, but always out of love. Do you have a Nathan? Now, for me, literally, I have a Pastor Nathan. I'm accountable to Pastor Nathan, so, and he's coming. So, that's, that's the truth. I have literally a Nathan. Okay. The next, uh, well, when it comes to lingering guilt, so repent, re repent sincerely. Okay. Have a Nathan. When you pray, you can appeal that God limits the consequences. But he will not necessarily answer the prayer. Okay? And then you set boundaries so that you don't repeat the same thing again. <laughs> Who among you here? Okay? You have quiet time notebooks. You, have, you journalize. Okay? Or not a notebook but digital. You write down somewhere. Okay? So I'm encouraging you. For me, I'm not a writer, okay, but I journalize. And if you will see my journal, it's full of confessions. I really pour out to God. And I see, I sometimes I tell myself, wow, everything in my journal is about confessing to God. Okay? But that's how it is. I really come to God with as, as transparent as I can. And I confess to Him. I confess to God sometimes, not just you know, blatant external sin. But I confess to God the times that He was prompting me to do something and yet I did not do it. I didn't do it, I delayed it, or I delegated it to someone else. And I knew God was telling me I should do it. In 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 22, okay, it says, Flee the evil desires of youth and pursue righteousness, faith, Love and peace along with those who are who call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So there are, in a way, two directions here. First is you, if you're moving here, all right, and it's evil desires, God is saying you flee, you run away from it. But when you run away, there has to be a new direction. So you flee, and then what do you do? You pursue. For some of us, if there is a sin here or a temptation here, you flee. But you're just fleeing, and then later on, you're attracted again to the same sin, and you go back. The idea here is you flee from that temptation or sin, and then you move towards and pursue a different direction. Pursue righteousness, faith, love, and peace. So that's the idea here. So when you sin, keep moving forward. And I challenge you, grow even more. Learn from the sin. Okay? Confess it. Make commitments and recommitments to God. When you sin, you can actually grow even more. And you can keep moving forward. So I ask you, what will you specifically flee from? And what will you specifically pursue? I believe God is already speaking to your hearts right now. What is God telling you to flee from? And what should you instead replace it with so that you can pursue? Okay? So, what are the first three? So, when you first. Okay? What's the first? When you, when you are victorious, keep moving forward. Second, when others fail you, you keep moving forward. And third, when you sin, keep moving forward. So those are the three stories of David. And let me just add one final thought, maybe a fourth point, but a sub-point of the third, okay, is what if you fail and it's not necessarily sin, okay? So when you fail, you keep moving forward. The idea here is you're not, in, you're not sinning, but it's just that you failed, okay? The idea is you keep moving forward. And I'm encouraged, and this was one of my most favorite verses in the past when I was still in university. And this is the background of that verse. Lamentations chapter 3, verse 19 to 23. 
to 19, it says, I remember my affliction and my wandering, the bitterness and the gall. I well remember them, and my soul is downcast within me. Okay? This is actually the prophet Jeremiah, and he was just lamenting all the pain that he has experienced and, and the seemingly failure of being the prophet of God who called him even when he was still in his mother's womb. He was emotionally depressed. Okay? And yet, he says, verse 21 to 23, which I would encourage you to do as well. Verse 21, it says, Yet this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope, because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed, for His compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. The point here is, whatever happened yesterday, it's yesterday. Learn from it. Let go of it. Keep moving forward because it's a new day. It's a new opportunity to serve God. It's a new opportunity to grow. It's a new opportunity to love even more. That's the idea of saying that they are new every morning. God's faithfulness is new every morning. Okay? Sometimes we might be tempted to doubt God and doubt ourselves because of the things that are happening in our lives. And we think, what's happening? Why am I failing all the time? And the writer recalls God's great love. The writer recalls God's great compassion. And the writer recalls it's a new day. It's a new day. So I challenge you, beware of fear. Okay? Beware of fear that's stopping you or paralyzing you. Okay? Someone said, don't fear, persevere. One of the, one of my, well, I like watching cartoons. Okay? Not, not Wiggles or High Five. Okay? Disney cartoons. And one of them that I really like because of the story is Meet the Robinsons. Okay? Meet the Robinsons. And this is a guy who kept failing in his, uh, in his inventions. And the theme there was, well, the, the favorite, my favorite line there was keep moving forward. And one time when he did an invention in front of his family in the future, and he failed, and some and the people rejoiced when he failed. Okay? And then he's asking, why? Why are you rejoicing in my failure? And the people told him, uh, the people in his family told him this, right? So if you can click, it says, you just focused on the bad stuff when all you had to do was let go of the past and keep moving forward. If you will hear, if you will study more on the life of Walt Disney, and this is a Disney movie, the keep moving forward is actually a quote from Walt Disney himself. And if you know all the successes of uh, Walt Disney, Disneyland, you know, and all these things, they, one, of it, one of the quotes that his peers would remember him say is keep moving forward. Okay? If you don't keep on moving forward, what's going to happen? When trials come, you back out. So what if God wanted to give you more challenges? Then you have nothing to do anymore. Okay? Because you cannot focus on what I'd say, level 2 challenge. And God wants to give you a level 3 challenge and you can't face it because on the level 2, you're giving up already. Okay? But when you go to level 3, it's because God wants you to serve Him and to, to be used by you even more. Okay, Jeremiah chapter 12, verse 5. Look at this. If you have raced with men on foot and they have worn you out, how can you compete with horses? If you stumble in safe country, how will you manage in the thickets by the Jordan? So it's just saying here, okay? if you cannot face your current challenges now, how can you face the bigger challenges ahead? Okay? So the idea here is you face the challenges now, even if you fail. You keep moving forward so that you're more prepared for the challenges in the future. Okay? So I want to encourage you, instead of fear, persevere. Okay? Persevere even more. I don't know, sometimes you think you failed as a parent, 
or you failed as a child, or you're failing in your own career, I encourage you, just ask yourselves, what lesson did you learn? And keep moving forward. Okay? I showed the video during our family camp, but I wanted to show it to you again. So this is the this is a video of a race of uh, Heber Dordiden. And it's a 600 meter sprint run. And you will see the video. Okay, he, she will be third, and then later on uh, she will leave. Uh, she will leave the pack. And yeah, there's something that we can learn from Peter Dorney there. Okay, so let's show this video. Mm -hmm. Jesus guarantees 
that we will have persecution, trials, and challenges. It's a guarantee. But God is saying that Christ is with us and He has overcome the world. And if you have Christ, you have nothing to fear. You can keep moving forward. Just like David, in the three stories we talked about, he was a man after God's own heart throughout his lifetime in spite of all the challenges that he faced. So, in summary, when victorious, keep moving forward. When others fail you, keep moving forward. When you sin, keep moving forward. When you fail, you keep moving forward. I want to close in prayer and I want you to just uh, reflect right now. Okay? Are you sort of paralyzed? Or are you just drifting in your spiritual walk? I ask you, what is hindering you from stepping up and moving forward? I give you some time to reflect, talk to God, and I will also pray for you. Father, maybe for some of us, we've experienced a lot of victories already, and that's why we're becoming complacent. Forgive us, Lord, allow us to keep moving forward. For some of us, maybe others have failed us, and we're disillusioned, we're discarded. So we pray, Lord, right now, that we will just keep moving forward as well, and love them even more. Lord, for some of us, we have sinned and we think our sins are unforgivable or God will not be able to use us again. Lord, we rebuke that lie. Allow us to keep moving forward. And for some of us who have failed, even if it's not related to sin, we've failed a couple of times and we're starting to doubt ourselves and we're starting to doubt you. We confess that to you right now. And we pray, Lord Father God, that we will keep moving forward. So that as we keep on moving forward day by day, by the end of our lives, we will be able to say, Lord, we pursued you the best way we can. And we pray, Lord, that one day we will get a commendation from you. And you can also say about us that we were men and women after your own heart. Thank you, Father God. We pray all of this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.